Okay, I would say let's start. Yes, let's start. Yep. So, hey, welcome everybody to the meetup. Can you go for the next slide, please? So, today's meetup is going to be about introduction to Scapy, and this is basically a, uh, is a Python packet manipulation library, and we will be showing you some use cases and going going to be giving some introduction to the library. Uh, next. Mm, yeah, uh, this this meetup is organized by NetBCN. NetBCN is a meetup group based in Barcelona, where we are where we are organizing meetups about any any uh, topics related to networking. Our website is www.netbcn.cat, and we welcome you on our Slack, uh, netbcn.slack.com. I would also like to thank Globo for hosting us and providing Zoom as a meeting room. Uh, regard, regard, regarding the format of the discussion, uh, if you have a question, you should unmute yourself and just speak up. And at the end, we will be able to accepting questions over Slack in slash general. And uh, you can ask them in Catalan, Spanish or English. Yes, please. So uh, I would like this workshop to be very interactive. So whenever you have any questions, just, just stop us, uh, yeah. Adam or myself. By presenting and yeah just don't forget to unmute you and once you once you ask the question then mute you meet yourself again please to avoid the noise okay so shall we start adam yes okay so the agenda for today's uh, meeting it will be like a short introduction of what scapi is um then we're going to go into the very basics of packet manipulation and all the different tools that the library has then we will do a sh very short um, demo in which we're going to show uh, live how this works. Then we will essentially show one of the use cases uh, that I personally use in my, in my in the company that I work for in Volta Networks, uh, which is a data plane use case. Then Adam is going to speak about the use cases, uh, um, some several use cases in, in the security area. And he's also going to do um, a demo. Um, so let's start with what SCAPI is. Essentially, SCAPI is, is a Python library uh, that is was this, was designed uh, for packet manipulation. Um, so it can do um, packet decoding. It can also craft or, or forge any any kind of packet. And it also very easily interfaces with the typical tools of sniffing and, and injecting packets. Um, there is support for, I think, all of the operating systems one way or the other. Uh, so it's really, it's really widespread. And it has also a couple of um, cool features, which is on one side, there is this uh, command line interface of SCAPI that is based on the Python uh, interpreter. So it's, it's really easy to, to try out and compose and create packets and, and do some basic things. And then it's it's very easy to also integrate with with common tools, as I said, uh, pickup or any sort of sniffing technology. Um, but also, by the same nature of uh, of the library, which is made in Python, it can be very easily integrated in a Python in a Python program or script. So one of the that, that's actually I didn't know that uh, when we were preparing this slide set, uh, I just didn't know how. Scapi was pronounced in Spanish or in French. It's, it's pronounced as Scapi. Uh, probably uh, English native speakers would, would, would say Scapi from Python, but apparently because the uh, the original uh, um, the, the original author and the maintainers are, are all French, they made this announcement uh, in in the in the in Twitter that that we should pronounce it as Scapi. So that's what we're going to use today. So in terms of um, protocol support. Um, again, I, I knew it had supported a lot of things, but when we were actually preparing this slide set, I was amazed of the amount of protocols that I didn't know, like GPRS or automotive uh, protocols. There's there's a lot of protocols. I can I can say that, of course, there are probably missing protocols. I precisely found one that I, that I, that is not there. Um, 
And you can use this command, which is ls command to, to list uh, the available uh, protocols. But the, the also the good thing of, uh, of uh, SCAPI is that you can build your own protocol. So if you're building some system that uses particular encoding and you want to reuse the already existing uh, headers, it's, it's really very easy to extend. Uh, and you just use their framework, uh, define your protocols and, and you move forward. So uh, at, a, at a glance, like very simple, you, you have, um, you can use Scapy you know, as a library in the left. Um, so you're simply importing uh, the, the protocols or, or, or the so-called layers in Scapy uh, that you want to use. You compose the packet. We will get into the details about this later on. And you can write your own script um, and, and use it as that. Or you can use SCAPI as, as, an, uh, as, as a program uh, that launches this Python shell. It's, it's, you can do exactly the same things that you would do with the regular Python interpreter. Uh, but in addition, all of this, uh, let's say, in, includes or imports uh, um, are already done. So, so you have them already available. So starting with, uh, with the very basics of how to use uh, Scapy. Um, so in Scapy, all of the packets are all, are Python objects, um, and so the way that you are creating them uh, is by using the, um, the the classes that define the the protocol. For instance, Ethernet, IP, TCP, and then you use uh, uh, the slash operator to concatenate packet headers. Uh, in this way, you're building all the stack of protocols that you need for that specific packet and the resulting object is the Python object. So um, with regards to the packet creation, as you have seen before in the example before, um, I didn't really specify all of the fields of all of the, pack, uh, of all of the layers in the packet. And this is because SCAPI by default um, will put some reasonable values uh, into, the, into the different um, into different uh, protocol headers. In particular, um, if you have a stack of protocols, it will automatically put things like, I don't know, the ether type or the IP proto, which already signals what is the next protocol that comes in the stack. Um, it would also add some common defaults like, uh, like a valid and quite common uh, TTL, which is 64. Um, and if you're not specifying things like, um, the source IP or 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 the max source, then it will try to use it will try to deduce it from your uh, from your computer what the interface that it would typically use to get out um, if if you're doing the routing. Um, it also auto computes lengths and checksums, especially checksums. This is this is very handy. Um, it's very tedious to actually compute that in a, in any program in any language, um, and it's really really error prone, and you don't want to really do that. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, for the fields that you are not explicitly initializing, um, then um, you have to tell SCAPI to explicitly initialize them, um, or it's also done when you're actually outputting that packet somewhere. That can be a send, or it can be uh, a write to a pickup file that we will see later on. In particular, the show to command is the one that will populate all the missing fields, will calculate all the checksums. And this is what we see on the, on the right here. And essentially, it's exactly the same packet that we saw before. Um, simply all the rest of the stuff has been, has been populated. In terms of uh, manipulating existing packets when you already have created them, um, you can copy them as any other object, um, uh, deep copy them. You can, you can essentially uh, access any of the, of the headers and the way to access is using um, the brackets operator um, and using the name of the field, uh, sorry, the name of the protocol. In this case, in the example is IP. Uh, you can use, as we said before, um, the ls command to, um, that is used also to list all the available protocols. Um, 
it can also be used if you pass a specific protocol to see all of the fields in that protocol. So for instance, uh, in IP, uh, it will show uh, uh, the protocol, uh, uh, like the field version, IHL, TOS, LAN, et cetera. Um, so you know how to actually access and modify those values. Um, as, we, as we see here for changing the IP source, the source is, is one of the, of the values of the IP header. So really, um, there's no limit on what combination of headers um, you, uh, you want to build, even if that would make absolutely any sense in any network. Uh, SCAPI doesn't uh, artificially limit that. Uh, you can uh, create stacks that don't make any sense. Uh, and you can even try to send it. Of course, most likely some of those stacks will just not work. Um, but this is particularly useful when you're trying to, uh, for some security use cases in some cases, but also when you're trying to see whether um, some of the software that is actually doing packet manipulation, um, let's say firewall, let's say um, NFV, for instance, it's one use case that used to be very common uh, one or two years ago. Um, you can use that to actually make sure that, that the, the whole parsing of the packet is correct. So another thing that, uh, to be honest, I've, I've never used much, but uh, that is really, it's really cool, uh, is that you can specify both a set of values or a range of values in some of the fields, or all of the fields, but in, 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 in the fields of the different uh, packet headers. And what it, what it means is that actually, in this case, in this example, um, that we're putting a set of two IP addresses in the destination IP, and we, we're putting a range of, of ports in the uh, TCP destination port, uh, that means that uh, the object P is actually not a packet, but um, a meta packet. And then when you're actually going to use it, for instance, to output it into uh, an interface or to output it into um, a pickup file, it will actually, um, it will actually create all the permutations of the packets. Uh, and so this is, this is even useful in some cases where you want to, um, uh, again, test that the parsing uh, is correct for all of the values and things like that. So, so this is, uh, uh, Adam, you take yeah. it from here? Yeah, this is for uh, another way how this is about sending packets. So basically, Scopy uh, also supports, for, provides functions for sending packets on layer three and layer two. So for example, for uh, sending packets on layer three, you, you would be sending using a function called uh, send. And basically what you would just do, as you can see on the picture to the left, is that we are basically building an uh, IP, basically an uh, ICMP packet to uh, 8888 and then we are just sending it out oh, the this packet uh, I mean you don't have much option and um, in most cases the kernel will route the I mean the underlying operating system kernel will, will route the this packet but if uh, you need to modify it on the layer 2 then you can send out you can use a send p function where you will need to also provide the link layer, uh, layer I mean the, the link layer meaning the Ethernet or uh, different layers and you could define the um, you could define the source and destination and for this though we will need to have a root uh, the root permissions on the systems. Uh, Mark can you switch the slide please? Yeah then way how you can it also supports receiving packets so there is a function called uh, sniff uh, sniff basically is uh, what would happen if you would be running like wireshark meaning that uh, you would be sniffing on the interface and you would be putting the device into the promiscuous mode so for this you need to have a uh, root permissions and you can you can pass in some arguments some of them are like count which you define number of packets you want to capture or timeout like number of seconds uh, you want to be capturing for and it will 
it will then provide you the packet dump from the network and in the in the in the picture you can see that we have we are sniffing on the interface uh, we we at zero and uh, we cancelled it and then we received one packet and uh, we are able to use the scapy interface to manipulate with packets so for example like convert it uh, to the command right, exactly this is the command that will yeah. generate exactly the same packet as packet zero in the in the capture yeah uh, next then there is a set of functions to send and receive packets on layer three so there are like uh, functions like sr which allows you to send and receive packets you will also get and answer the packets and this will basically couple of this will basically return a couple of packets i never understood really how many packets but uh, i mean i used i used to use like the send and sniff and these functions are like uh, wrappers around uh, getting the packets so for example in the in the question in the, in the picture to the left we see that we are again sending the ping to google dns server and we receive two packets but we got one answer scapy is intelligent enough to be basically able to to match queries to answer so for example if we are sending a request to 888 and we receive a reply then it, it is able to match them then there is another function called sr1 uh, which basically uh, is designed for a cases where you want to send uh, one packet and you are waiting for a reply so this is actually something we are going to use in a security live demo and uh, sr loop is basically the same thing but this basically only difference is that this keeps going until cancelled so if you keep it running it, it is running the, the on the picture on the right you can see that the sr loop sending the ping and it is printing out the it is printing out the uh, received responses and i stopped it after five uh, packets and for sr1 you see that the, there the, uh, there has been the two packets received and uh, it was matched. Yeah, can you go for the next slide? Yeah, so what we have for layer, layer three, we also have for layer two. So here we can see a function like SRP, which is basically the same thing as SR, but for layer two. SRP one, the same as SR, but for layer two, and SRP loop for layer to on the on the on the example for example this is something that the, which i'm trying to determine determine which hosts are alive on the network by sending by sending uh our pink request next yeah. another pretty cool stuff about copy uh, scapy is that uh, it uh, it uh, allow in uh, allows you to generate packets and then you can actually write them to a pickup and you can also read from a pickup format which is quite handy which for example i used to use in cases when i needed to generate certain packets and i wanted to launch them on a the network but i wanted to do them for example from a packet generator which is much more performant but i use copy to generate the packets so on the example on the picture for example you can see that we are defining the packet we are writing it to a pickup and then we are reading it again and we are basically getting the same response next uh, another interesting thing about scope is that as mark mentioned it has a support for a lot of different uh, protocols and contrib uh, the, uh, contributions like bgp and mpls so there are some headers defined in contrib scopy package uh, but they have to be manually imported even from scapy cli so the idea is that you would be able to find uh, you would be able to find protocols about bgp uh, http lacp ldp and multiple routing protocols what is actually interesting to know is the is the function called ls which will basically display all the available protocols and if you want to do this the same thing in the with the user interface then you can actually use explore and i think mark will be showing this in the live demo can you go next 
another interesting thing is that sometimes you need to uh, use certain well predefined or well known well known so functions so for example arping uh, what i was doing uh, previously but the uh, scapy comes in with the built-in commands so for example if you want to check if the host is alive on layer 2 you would be using arping function basically it handles all the packet building and handling the responses sending the packet and so on you can also check different thing or diff different uh, different different uh, things for example if if you, if you want to test the dhcp you can basically create a dhcp request or dynamic dns uh, updates yep and now mark does the demo of life okay so i'm not sure if someone has a question at this point please if you have any question on mute um speak up we're going to now do a simple demo um so we have here the the, the scapy cli um, we started it with with sudo uh, for the purpose of the demo i've also set up um a pair of VTHs, uh, which are virtual Ethernet inter interfaces in the Linux kernel. And the only reason why, why I did that is so that we can inject traffic and, and we can capture traffic without um, all the background traffic that there is in my, in my real interfaces. So at the same time, I've just, I'm going to start a TCP dam on, on this interface, okay? Um, um, the, the thing is, I'm starting this uh, TCP dump with some flags to see also the layer two packet so that we can see all the things that we're generating. So um, the first thing is I'm going to show this command that um, Adam was talking about, which is explore. Is um, it seems that it's not working because I don't have the the, uh, the Python installed. I will show it afterwards when we are not in sudo because I guess this is an environment problem. The way that you build um, packets in SCAPI is, as we said, you are defining your header um, and with the values that you want to use. Okay, in this case, a source MAC. Okay, we're not going to put uh, a destination MAC. And you start to stack uh, protocols one after the other. If you're particularly interested in something, for instance, a destination port. Um, then you use uh, th then you would put it here. If you're not interested, you just leave, leave it here. So once you have this uh, this object, you can use all the things that you would typically use uh, um, uh, in Python. So for instance, the operator length. Uh, you can see what is the length of the packet. Okay, if you are actually um, printing the object, it's going to only show you the the values that have been defined. Uh, in particular, the source MAC in this case, the ether type and, and, and the protocol because we haven't said anything else. Um, so what we can do now is we can essentially inject this packet in the interface. Okay. And what's going to happen is obviously it's going, it's going to send us the packet. It's here. There's a little bit of IPv6 background noise here. Um, but as you see, it has populated all the different fields. For instance, in the, in the source and destination IP addresses has put the loopbacks and so on. Okay, and if we want to see what is the auto completion that it's doing, we can use show two to see that. Another thing that we can do from the CLI, but also as a library is to essentially from the same Python script that we're building, we can XDAM the packet the same way that you would see it in Wireshark. Okay. Um, at the same time, if you're using some other tools, you can convert this into the raw hexadecimal in case you would need it. And this is particularly useful if you're using um, different tools like traffic generators and so on, in which the formats, most of them accept PCAPs, um, but but some others, uh, um, some others would uh, would ask for, for instance, the hexadecimal representation, things like that. Okay, um, what I'm going to show you now is also um, how the whole range of values work. So for instance, we're going to define that the destination IP address is a.a.4, .a .4, sorry, a.a.a.8, .a .a .8, 
as one of the possibilities, we're going to do a set and we're going to send it also to 9.9.9.9. .9 and we're going to output this, this packet again um, um, into, into the virtual ethernet. And you will see that this results in two different packets. Okay, one destined to 888, the other destined to, to 999. So this is particularly useful um, um, also for some of the use cases that Adam is going to speak. Um, now we're going to show how the sniffing function works, um, uh, which is pretty simple. Um, you use, as we said, the sniffing function here. You indicate which of the interfaces you want to sniff. In this case, we're going to use the VTA0. And you can put a timeout. Let's put 10 seconds. And what I'm going to do is inject some packets, which will only be essentially uh, art requests because I, I haven't really configured any IP address. You, we see them here, and now the packets have finished. Uh, the, the sniffing uh, capture has finished. And we can use, again, the typical um, tools that you would use in Python, like the length of the packets shows us two and also the operator as if it was um, an array of packets. And we see that this is exactly the packet that, that, we, that we injected, the app request that we were seeing in, in TCP dump. And as usual, we can go here and say, okay, perhaps I want, um, I want the ARP, just, just seeing the ARP, or I want to change a field and copy it and use it, uh, perhaps modified. Um, and this is, this is the way that you are actually forging packets um, in the way that you, that you want. So that would be, that would be all from, from, let's say, a very, very simple and very basic tutorial of how to use copy. Of course, all that we've done here in the Python CLI um, can be used from, from a Python script or from your application in Python. Uh, which is what is particularly handy also. So, excuse me, Mark. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's a Peter. Hi, Peter. Uh, I have a question. Um, is there any documentation or um, that explains what the keywords are for the protocols or is this just all standard PCAP? So, uh, so you mean the, fee the value, so the name of the fields and things like that? Like in your, uh, in your screen right there now, like a few lines up, you have P equals ether, you have source equals MAC address. Mm -hmm. What uh, is there documentation that explains yeah, so you can, source SRC? Yeah. yeah, you can use LS to show all the protocols and there are a lot, okay? And then if you want a particular protocol, say IP or ethernet, I think you were saying, then you use this and it will tell you, um, what is, what is the name of the field and the length. Um, and this works for, for all of the, of the protocols. So because, because in, in okay. the framework that Python builds has this metadata of how many fields and what is the length and so on, uh, you can always get this, you, you, can, you, ha you have this introspection capability built in SCAPI. Okay, thank you. Um, one other question. Mm -hmm. um, the, the hexadecimal output, is it possible to import hexadecimal into yes. SCAPI? Okay. Yes, uh, we can do it if you want. Um, so um, so I've import, I will import Binaski. Uh, Binaski is some tools that, that are doing binary um, uh, manipulation. And we can do, for instance, um, and get the bytes of the packet, okay? And, this will generate us the, let's say the hexadecimal um, uh, string, let's say, and you can import it, for instance, from this hexadecimal by just doing the reverse operation exactly, which is, we can say, okay, the packet is ethernet, you have to tell which is the, the base protocol, okay? And then you can do uh, exactly an X defy, and then you put the string, and by the way, this is something that I personally use sometimes because one of the tools that we have, um, one of the tools that we have is expecting this sort of, this sort of input. So, um, 
So I'm using these Vinasky XLIFI and XLIFI pretty often. And by the way, this output can also be copied from a regular Wireshark. So if you can copy from the Wireshark with right click, you can copy all the bytes that are in the packet in this format also. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Is there any other question? Okay, then we jump into uh, the, uh, the use cases. So, yeah. So the security use cases, so SCAP is very flexible and it's very handy for network security engineering. So some of the use cases uh, I saw people using in the uh, people use, using or I used in the past. So for example, pretty useful for Recon. Uh, there are a lot of tools, maybe better tools like Nmap uh, or different scanners that are focusing on uh, scanning, but uh, they're uh, I mean, they're pretty well known. For, so, for example, they will be detected. So, the idea is that if you would like to avoid being detected, maybe creating your own scanner could be an could be an option. So, you are you are able to use Capi to basically build one, and you you are able to determine exactly what you need. So, for example, you could be check if the port is alive, or if the host is alive, and so on. Another interesting uh, use case is the infrastructure penetration testing. While you want to, for example, see how the devices are responding to certain packet combinations. One of the examples I read about in the past was that there were some switches that have a very weird VLAN handling and you would be able to use the so-called VLAN hopping, meaning that you would just prefix the packet with the VLAN Header and you you would be able to inject the packet in the particular VLAN, meaning that the implementation was not properly tested or was not properly handling certain cases. And then another use case would be like firewall configuration testing. So let's say that you want you want to have a complex firewall setup, but you want to test it, and Scapy provides you kind of you could have actually automate the setup with uh, Scapy. Uh, just by generating the packets, the destination IPs, and the, all the combinations you can think of. Uh, Mark, please switch the slide next. So in the in the security live demo, so basically we will be go, doing a very simple port scanner that will be determining the status of the port. Uh, this is a technique basically taken from uh, Nmap. This is basically something they call like stealth uh, scanning or SIN scan. So the idea is that the attacker, the CRAT, will be sending a SIM packet to port 22 on scanme.nmap.org. The machine will respond with SYNAC and uh, then the attacker will send the uh, RST, meaning that he wants to ca cut the connection. But the fact that the host uh, responded with SYNAC means that the port is open. Yeah. And this 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 will be this will be the basic this will be the basic example. So now I will show let me show the screen. Uh, so I I wrote the I did it before, but the whole idea is that uh, I wrapped the. First of all, we need to start with defining the source port. So Scapy provides a function called uh, ran short. Let me do it like this one. So I run the Scapy shell and let's say that I want to generate the random source port. So every time when I try to access it, I get the random port, which is just good enough for this case. Then uh, we would like to build and scan for the TCP port. So basically, we define we would define the payloads. Then we would uh, we would concatenate them with the slash operator, and we would be sending the packet out via sr1 function because we are interested basically just for the one response. Once we receive uh, that one, we send the packet with the reset flag set. 
or we send it and if the if the response has tcp flex contained the uh, synac then we claim that the port is alive and uh, uh, otherwise it's uh, dead so so uh, there is there is a site called scan scan me that the door which basically allows that to be tested for for scanners so what, what actually happens is that the um scappy created a packet send the, send, send it out detected that there is a synac and based on the information we determine the status of the port what is particularly interesting about this is that this is this is extremely basic but this gives you a lot of flexibility because you could be defining uh, contents of the packet the payload for example you could you could include different uh, for example let's say that you are scanning a http server you, you could be you, you could be including different uh, headers you could be dif different uh, attributes of the of the packet and this is one of the strongest point of the uh, of scapy meaning the flexibility it, which uh, gives you um, i don't know if there are any if there are any other questions or if you want to try something because i think this is just pretty simple use case but the idea is that in just, in just in just really in just a matter of few lines of code you are able to create something that's able to help you in your day-to-day -day job if you need to automate if you need to test or if you need to do some security assessments If not, then I am passing the word to Mark. Thank you. So, <clears throat> uh, in terms of um, essentially vendors and people who are writing software for uh, network equipment, um, and that can range from basic CPEs. Uh, to firewalls, to switches, to routers, all of this, uh, uh, SCAP is, is very useful uh, in, in several situations. Um, one of them is uh, essentially to, to test um, the, the behavior of forwarding of routers, of switches, and even on firewalls, as, as, um, um, as Adam was, was explaining, um, firewall configuration, even as a user, to write the proper rules and to make sure that there are no holes, that there are no ranges that are incorrectly uh, filtered can be tricky. And one way to make sure that this is correctly built is to just build a test uh, that actively tests for this sort of things. Another useful thing, and again, uh, Adam also mentioned it, is uh, to program traffic generators. Uh, some of the traffic generators uh, uh, that we, that we usually work, at least uh, that I personally have worked with, um, they, they require to, to set up uh, for particular tests, like specific tests that you wanna do uh, to provide a pickup with, a, with, a, with the packets. And, and so it's, it's very simple to create a small script in Python uh, and SCAPI to build those packets, uh, matching your criteria uh, for the test. And finally, uh, and this is very important is that for negative testing and fuzzy testing, understanding, well, let's try to break the thing. Uh, yeah, SCAP is also very, very useful, specifically for, for what we mentioned before, which is that it gives you absolute freedom to build the packets with the values and the combinations that you want. Okay, and we can jump to the next one. So here is, uh, well, a typical use case and where I, well, we personally use it in, in, in the organization that I'm working with in Volta Networks to do a basic unit testing of our devices and in particular the, for, the forwarding device. So what we have here in the, in the, in the left is, is a white box switch in which we're building, we're, we're actually adding the software on top. And in this particular scenario, which is very simplified, what we're trying to make, what we're trying to validate is that the actual programming of, of the ARP table and the REAP as high level concepts uh, is correct and that the device is routing correctly the IP packets. So what we would do is we would connect that physical switch to a server, 
two interfaces to the two, two different ports. We would build um, a small scopy program that on one side through the RPC or through the CLI even, uh, whatever, it, it just sets th that intended forwarding state. So the RIP, uh, we're saying 8.0 slash 8 go via this next hop, and then we program the ARP table. You can imagine a more complex use case in which you don't have a fixed ARP entry, but that you expect that to be um, to be resolved. And then SCAPI would also inject the ARP replies to, to kind of train the, 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 the router to, to properly forward the packet. And then the test is, is very, very simple in which we are injecting a packet uh, Ethernet in this case, IP, um, whatever it goes after that is really not applicable for this test. Um, and then we are directing the packet to the MAC address of that port, of that reception port. The source MAC address is really not important, but what it is really important is to make sure that once the packet has been routed, the destination MAC address conforms to, uh, to your neighbor. Uh, MAC address, in this case, 172.16.01, okay? That the source MAC address is also correct and it's your own MAC address on port 25, 19 is 25 in, in hexadecimal. And very important when you're doing IP routing, the TTL is decremented by one. So these two values are in green to, to show, um, to show that, that these are particular conditions that you have to test. Um, and you can even check that explicitly that the switch will not be mangling any other field, in particular the destination IP address or the source IP address, or any of the, of the bytes that are important in the payload. Um, so this is, this is one way of using SCAPI and it's very useful. Uh, we're using extensively with uh, tests that are way more complicated in which you have to train the system, you have to inject the packets first, you expect certain amount of packets, for instance, for layer two, you're not expecting replicas, you're not expecting uh, unintended VLAN manipulation. So uh, this is, it's, it's really a great tool for this kind of job. Okay, so um, we are almost at the end. Um, some additional references, there is a, there is a great introduction to SCAPI uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this link. And also sometimes it's useful to have a look into the repository itself. Um, um, it's really not that necessary if you know all these commands that we talk about, DLS and the explore and so on. But, but sometimes uh, in the past, like a couple of years ago, there were still some bugs and so sometimes necessary to, um, to have a look. And one last thing, um, at least from our side, uh, please, we welcome you to join us in at VCN so that we can continue talking about technical and non-technical uh, network related topics. Um, so feel free to join us. And that's, that would be it, I think. I don't know if there is any question with regards to the use cases or SCAP in general. Alan, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, right. Um, so thank you. I don't know if you have any other questions. Adam, any other comments, questions? Nope, not from our side. Well, we can check Slack if somebody raised the questions, but... So far, no questions. Okay. Perhaps I, this is Paolo, perhaps I, I have a, a question. Um, so first of all, I wanted to thank you both for this introduction to SCAPI uh, because I, before, you know, this idea of the workshop, I didn't know about it. And uh, I was, you know, still, uh, probably a few generations back, just making my C program and creating my own packets and things like that. And I have a great use case for this, which is actually uh, testing a lip pickup collector uh, uh, 
so fanta fa fantastic stuff. And the question is uh, really tan tan a tangent on SCAPI. So uh, do you know if there is any, you know, um, upper layer application based on SCAPI, like, uh, you know, to generate traffic? Like, I don't want to say something similar, you know, to what, to all the advanced and beautiful features of Spirant, because that goes also in the application, but whether something upper level exists where, for example, if you want to test a cache of uh, flows, so you just want to create a lot of flows and things like that, whether that already exists or you have to code it yourself. So, so to be honest, I, I'm not aware of anything like that. Um, I know that there are several several projects that use it internally, but um, like for the specific use case that, that I told you, I suspect some companies have something like that, um, but I'm not aware. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I don't know. Cool. So it will be nice uh, um, research after this session. Thank yeah. you. Uh, hello, this is Costas. If, if I may add a comment here. Um, Excellent stuff. I had seen, uh, to be honest, Scappy a few years ago when uh, a vendor had implemented a lightweight 4 over 6 solution. One of the things I talked in NetBCN. And I think, Paolo, that you can achieve what you, what you want by generating the flows from Scappy, saving it in a pickup file, and use something like Snub, for example, to replay this pickup file at huge line rate speeds, utilizing uh, full uh, 10 gig links and stuff like that. But um, if you go for Snub, for example, Snub is one solution, perhaps Cisco's VPP could also be used for that. But I guess you would need some sort of driver, uh, a card that is supported by, by, by these tools. But in this case, you would uh, generate your flows from SCAPI and then replay it with a high, uh, with high data rate, let's say, even line rate for, for certain cards. This is... Thank, thank you, Costas. And by the way, on the, on the chat, uh, Martin, uh, he already posted something that it seems there is a tool. I didn't investigate, but he says it's called the T-Rex and it seems it comes from Cisco. Uh, but so maybe that has changed. Uh, but as far as I know, um, T-Rex is again taking as an input pickup. Maybe that, that has changed. In the past, I, I know this this uh, DPDK based traffic generator, and as Costas was yeah, explaining, you can always import via pickup. Yeah, yeah, totally. But maybe they have integrated. I don't know. Maybe they have integrated Scapi. I will have a look. Martin, is are you still here or? Yes, I'm still here. So, do you know if it, there is a direct fit in the sense that you can put directly the the Scapi commands into into the? Yes, you, you can do actually both. You can use pcap, but the pcap is just in the idea to um, load your your basic um, information. And then internally, Scappy is used to do ranges, to do different IP addresses, because if you want to generate streams, you want to have multiple different IP addresses, destination addresses, source ports, et cetera. And the PCAP file is only used for skeleton. And then with um, Scappy, you are filling all the different parts which you want to randomize. And you can use T-Rex in that mode, but you can also use it in a single burst modus where you just um, describe the package um, via um, Scappy syntax and just really say, I want a packet with those kind of information and then send 1,000 of those. Cool, cool. I, I, I don't know how advanced it is because I, I don't know uh, if, if you're familiar with tools like Spartan and so on, which they do all sorts of validation and emulation of a lot of clients and so on. I don't know if it's so advanced to reach that point. Do you know that? I mean, if you, I don't know the Spirant. I do not, I do know the Ixia quite well, uh, Ixia network and Ixia load. Um, it's more comparable, comparable to an Ixia um, network. 
um, but you can't do all um, the, the protocol ideas. You can't really in, uh, start a VGP session. You can't do like all the stateful stuff. So it's just a packet generator. It's a stateful packet generator. It has some form of capability of doing BGP route injection, but I never used that. But on, on this kind, on this area, it's really limited. It's really packet generator, but it's really high speed. You can generate um, 100 gig with common hardware. And I think that's um, the important stuff for that. Right, right, very interesting. I mean, I had a look at T-Rex maybe four years ago. Uh, and so I was, I was not aware of these changes. So thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Someone else comments, questions, feedback. So I guess, I guess we're wrapping it up. Yeah, I mean, if people still have questions, I mean, we, well, we, unless there are any questions now, we, we are still taking questions over Slack. So, I mean, you can always ping us there. So then let's wrap up the session and thanks everybody for attending. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you. Thank you Bye. for everything. See you guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.